yeah The ones that hate me the most look just like me You tell me what that means Make a slick comment and see what that brings I've seen it go down, we can reenact things Extreme like DMX sing These boys pussy and they PMS sing People in the city see the movement occurring And say, my God, I wanna be in that scene Damn right you wanna be in this scene She had the video trying to be in this scene Used to fantasize about being in this scene Bluegrass girl, but she got big dreams What's poppin'? It's exciting times because let me show you why if we look at our gyro board, which shows you know all the progress and all the tasks which we have to do in order to get this project done, we only have one issue. Let me just switch over to the board here. We have one issue left which we need to solve before we're done with the whole beta version of the app and we can begin the alpha test. And we're even a bit early on schedule because if we look at the roadmap, we were meant to be done on the 20th of October. It's the 16th of October and we're pretty much done with the first version of the app and after this we can test it and we can make sure that everything works and then we can make the improvements based on that uh, test. But we have one more thing to fix which is the layout of the accounts page because if you look at the accounts page right now it's pretty ugly it's like the, the text is wrongly sized and you know I didn't have it designed for this one I just made it on the go. So we need to make this one look a little bit better we need to make the text uniform size. And after that, we should be good to go. So let's get to that. Can't touch me, I got instincts. Locked in the house, but I'm plotting things. I brought a gang to the party with me. Five white boys, but they not in sync. <laughs> Fuck what y'all think. Fuck everything that you say about me. My dogs like to play mad in the 2K. But one thing they don't do is play about me. My homeboy Tyler, he playing South Beach. He told me this summer he gon' fix my jumper. I told Boy Wonder that we might got a thumper. I've been trying to pop, now I'm on like Shumper. <laughs> Now they on my bumper, green room chock full of all my comforts. Now I hope you're actually liking these voiceovers by the way, because I got this really nice microphone that makes it sound like you're real crisp and good when you're speaking. So I hope it sounds nice in your ear too. If not, then listen on headphones and you're gonna hear this lovely ASMR cold talk. But okay, I thought that now I'm gonna show you the app, how it's all connected and how all the uh, coding files work and how they work together in order to create this beautiful interface which we call the UI of the application. So let's get to it. First of all, there's this main page, which is basically where everything runs from. Um, here we have in Flutter in Dart, you have to have this run uh, function, which is basically uh, a void function. It doesn't return anything, it just runs the app. So here we have a uh, Flutter binding ensure initialized and Firebase initialized app, where we basically just activate all of the uh, plugins which you use, such as Firebase, which is the plugin we use and the database we use in order to pull data from the database. I'll show you the database too as well in a second. And then this does the run app function which basically just initializes the app and pushes it to the simulator which we're using which is currently the iPhone 13 simulator. And my app is the class of the, or the stateless widget which is the wrapper for the entire app. And here we have uh, like some theme data. We have a multi provider which is basically used to access the login state throughout the entire app. This is also in the future where we'll add the music capability so that you can listen to music uh, not the music, sorry, the saga, wherever you are in the app, which will be quite cool. And then we have the home page. And the home page is this one which you see here, it's where you take in to begin with. And uh, the home page is basically just a wrapper as well, because we have a home page, which the home page scaffold, the search page, the category page, and the profile page. Let me just close this. Uh, and this is what decides what's displayed. And as you can see, there's the home page scaffold, which is this button, and then it's a search page the category page, the profile page, etc. So for example, if I press the search page, we're taken to this one, which is the wrapper, and then we're changing the index of this list uh, here, which sends us to this uh, second page. But uh, never mind. So on this home page, we have a couple of lists, and these lists are horizontal, and they come from a service which I've built in this app called uh, listbuilders.dart and basically here we have all of the list builders so that's why this is quite a big document because they're all just separate list builders this uh, document itself is like 552 lines of code but for example we have the feature list widget copy basically I don't know why it's called copy uh, I probably just copied it at the very beginning when I made the app but this is the featured uh, sagas and this I can decide which ones are featured right now I just have the the, the in order as they are in the database, I think it's alphabetical order, that's why this Alice in the Wonderland is the first one. Then further down we have for example the similar sagas list and this is what's used to determine sagas. If you for example press uh, this one, you're able to see similar sagas and this generates similar sagas based on the tag tags as well as the description. Uh, 
scroll down some more, Saved Sagas, this is basically the one which is called My Favorites, and it's just, if you for example go to this particular saga, you press the, when it's uh, loaded, you press the star here, and it will be added to your favorite sagas. Then we have History Sagas, just a test to see, for example, okay, if I want to push History Sagas, I can put them there. Then we have Random Sagas, this just generates a random set of sagas which, which we show. But okay, let's move on to the search page. And we have that one over here. So the search page uh, is like, a, like the home page, but instead of having a horizontal list, it has a vertical list with all sagas. And then we have this query string here. And this is what's updated using this one, my controller, because in this search field, there's a controller and then this add listener function uh, allows you to do something when this is changed. So it listens to change in the state of this, well, not necessarily state, I think, but the content of this search field. And if it's empty, then the query is empty, of course. And if it's the first query, we just show all sagas. But then otherwise, we uh, set the query to my controller text and my controller is what's the controller of this particular text field. Down here we're encoding whatever you type in here so that it will be able to match it to the title in the actual database. So that's the search page. If we go over to the categories, this is just a category page. So for example here we can see all of the categories we have and then this is just also a list builder which pulls a list of all the categories from the database. Quite a simple one. It's just uh, just a button. So if I press uh, non-fiction, for example, I get all the non-fiction sagas, etc. Of course, then we head over to the profile page. And this one's a bit complicated. That's okay, this page itself is not necessarily super complicated because it's just a, a list with the different things. So for example, you can press about this app and then this is just like a little pop-up thing which just says this is what it's owned by, this is the licenses and here you can view all of the licenses for the app. Basically, no one looks at this, but it's just, you know, you need to have it, for example, if you're gonna publish it in the App Store or the Google Play Store. Uh, close that one, and then FAQs, this one will be sent to the website, but it's just like, there's a placeholder because it will be there in the future. My subscription, currently we don't have that function, so that one does not uh, click. But if I press account details, it will check if you're logged in, for example, and if you're logged in, it will take you to your account page where you can view uh, first name and etc. And let's see, see how that's built. So this one was a bit complicated to build and what this one does essentially is that it uses this auth service class uh, and then it checks if the users is equal to uh, or the user UID which is currently logged in is equal to a user which we have in the database. And if it is, then it will uh, return a circle progress indicator which is this spinny thing until we get the details and then it will pull the details from this snapshot has data which is like this stream builder so it will build uh, in the future it will build uh, a page based on the data on the uh, in the database but if not there's this sign up home screen sign in sign up home screen for example if i'm logged out i can press log out and then i can press account details and then we get this so we still have the old logo here we need to change this but then depending on if we're logged in or if we're logged out uh, this will actually check if we're logged in or if we're logged out. So that's, I think that's in the auth class. Yeah, here we have it. And here there's something called a wrapper. So wrong wrapper. We have multiple wrappers. Here we have it, wrapper. So this wrapper checks if the auth service and then it checks if the user is logged in. So if user is equal to null, basically there's no user uh, logged in, then we're taken to the sign up home screen, which is this one where you can either sign in and you can do that here, or you can sign up and you do that here. But if you're logged in, this function here checks if you're logged in and then if you are logged in, it will take you to the account page, which is the one which we just saw previously. And if there happens to be an error, just like a, an else statement here, which will return a circular progress indicator, the spinny thing. And the same thing applies to the home page wrapper. Because for example, now, as you saw, we have this favorite sagas, but since we're not logged in now, we don't have any favorite sagas. So that's why we just get this one tile, which says sign up now or sign in in order to save sagas, basically. So this one runs in the background when you uh, sign up and then it will say sign in or create account or save the sagas. And if it's if the user is null, basically the user is not signed in then it will return this sign in or create account, which is basically this one, and it will take you to that page. Or if you're signed in, it will show you your saved sagas. Uh, I think there's another wrapper. Saga view wrapper. So yeah, here, 
There's the same logic. Basically, we check if the user is signed in. If the user is null, then we just return a warning. So for example, if we press listen now and we're not signed in, we get this pop-up warning because the user is null here in the code. So we can either then sign in or sign up, or we can close it and head back. Sweet. Then let's go to the saga view code. So this is the particular code which shows you the saga in question. Let's take saga test story four, for example. It will, uh, based on the list builder here, it will use, uh, so for example, we can take the list builders page first. So if you press one of these categories or one of these sagas, sorry, in the list, it will do this uh, function. It will execute the on tap function because right now this whole uh, image is wrapped in a gesture detector meaning that when this just some when this detects a gesture in this case an on tap it will do execute this function so then it will go to the navigator it will push the context and it will push to saga view and to saga view it will send the image url it will send the title the author description everything which we need to display the saga itself and once we get to this we will take take us to saga view and as you can see this saga view class requires that you submit an image a title author description in order to be able to build this view and that's what it does in almost real time so then we have defined those here and we've initialized those here and then basically when we've passed this to this uh, view we're free to use them as we want so for example we can use the let me show you further down here we have a, a list view and the first one's an image and here we use the image URL as a network image and we pass that to uh, this image widget and that's what shows this widget or this image sorry uh, in this page. So for example now let me show you how this is connected to the database. You can go to the test story 4 which we just got to find which that one is. We got to find the title test story 4 here we go and this is the image URL which we passed to that one and we can check that this is just a sample image which I've used for all of them. It's like a cover album for one of the songs which I used to begin with but we can go for example to this stock footage site and we can go for a let's go for this picture. We'll just copy the image address and we'll paste it in the database. And we'll update the database and then we'll rebuild the app and now the image is way too large let's I'm not sure what the issue is there we go I think the image is just way too large it's not the right format but as you can see <laughs> yeah, it's massive but as you can see it updated the the image and we have it live there so for example now if we wanted to do this if you wanted to pick another one, which is more the right format, I guess. I think this one was more too square. Yeah, never mind. You get the idea. So this is how you pass data between the different widgets and widgets and the different pages. So this is how I how I do that and how I pass that data along. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It's been a that's been a review of the code itself. It shows you. I've shown the how they all connect together and basic I mean I could go into a lot more detail there's like 6,000 lines of code here but now I've just shown how the, the app functions in general so yeah I think the next video is gonna be just me going through the app a bit showing you more about the details I guess you've seen some over here but this is more of a focus of how the code uh, does this and how you know flutter is put together for this so in the next video I'll go through the app itself so see you later signing out Peace. I know we're acting stupid. Maybe just a